Governor Babajide Sonwolu of Lagos State has promised to continue the pace of development in the center of excellence, Lagos State, if he wins Saturday's election, which will offer him a second term in office. The governor, who made a commitment at an interactive session with newsmen, said new infrastructural development is a sure path to catapulting Lagos State to higher pedestal among the Community of Nations. The governor also embarked on a campaign tour of major markets populated by people from the southeast, pledging to ensure the safety of the businesses and properties of Indigo in Lagos State. Ahead of Saturday's governorship election, Lagosians are very much aware of Sanwulu's achievements, which include the construction of over 308 routes across the state, the repositioning of the health sector through the building of more health centers at the grassroots, and a fresh, free health policy for children below 18 years and adults above 65 years of age. Joining us now on this show to discuss his re-election bid is Babajide Sonwolu, the governor of Lagos State. Governor Sonwolu, thank you very much for joining us. Ruben, thank you very much. Ayo, You're nice welcome. to meet you. Almighty Rufai, nice to, nice to be you know, right in your space. <laughs> Thank you very much. Anyway, right. no. today is International Women's Day. Absolutely. Yes. Maybe we should start from there, yeah. you know, uh, to find out how women-friendly you are and uh, what you have been able to do for the women of Lagos State so that, uh, you know, um, they will vote for you Absolutely. Well, on Saturday. Thank you very much. And it's critical. And I am happy Women's Day. Thank you, sir. Uh, so today gives an, an opportunity for us to really reemphasize and say that we've been a gender-friendly government. We've been a government that typically actually look at women differently. I intentional, very, very intentional. And today you can see in the pages of newspaper, I've commended all of my female cabinet members, about 33, 35%. I kept with a quarter. Today I've signed out letters to the Lagos Inspire Women, 250 of them. These are women that have distinguished themselves in their chosen profession, banking, public sector, finance, um, the, the entertainment industry, the tourism industry, all spheres, women, 250 of them. Um, so today as well, I'm actually from here, going to attend another women rally, about 100 and, sorry, about 10,000 of them, you know, whatever I can fill up the stadium, all women, just two, um, celebrate them, to acknowledge them, their rules they've played. They are, they are, they are a special being, you know, they can, they, can, they, 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 they can do so many things at the same time, you know, and um, for us beyond that, if you look at our public service, we have more women as permanent secretaries, we have more women as judges, we have more women as directors, both in health and in teaching. So deliberately intentional, I don't stand in a picture that has all men, we have to fill it up, you know, with women. And after women, we look at our youths and every. But today it's WIWD, and I want to say a big shout out to all of our mothers, our spouses, our daughters, um, our you know leaders of industry, our unicorns, you know our achievers in the country and in our various states. To say that we're with you, you know, we we'll understand that you have a space right beside us, not behind, right, right beside us, and we believe that together we can indeed build an ecosystem where, you know, not only governance will be better, but society at large will be better. So kudos to our women. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And, and obviously, it's an interest and a passion for me being a woman. But beyond the letters and the acknowledgement of women in your cabinet, yeah. I'd like to ask you things that affect women in Lagos State. Maternal mortality. Yeah. We look at this year's theme on technology. Yeah inclusion, digital equity for women. So that also speaks to education. We have about 2 million children, out, young children out of school. Um, we talk about poverty levels. We talk about access to jobs. These are specific issues that face women. I'd like you to really speak about maternal mortality. Um, looking at the website of the Lagos State Government, there isn't much recent data mm -hmm. on the numbers in terms of the work that has been done. There mm -hmm. were a few you know, talks around the, uh, the activities and the campaigns that have been done. But in terms of the actual figures, it's not on there. Do you have the figures? Well, I'm, I might not be able to be very specific, but I know the numbers are coming up. And why would I say so? 
In the last three and a half years, we've opened four maternal and child hospitals. We've opened one at Etiosa. We've opened one at Badagri. We've opened one at Epe. We've opened one at Alimosho. Specific for women and the children. So that goes to speak to the fact that we are intentional to look after them and to ensure that those numbers do indeed come down, right? We're building the biggest pediatric hospital in the whole of Sub-Saharan Africa, the New Mercy Children's Hospital. It's still speaking to ensuring that our mothers can go to delivery and come out. During COVID, I gave a six month free post antenatal and postnatal, you know, charges free, you know, for all women that walk into our public you know, health institutions for over six months. They did not have to pay that. Even today, right, if you are, you know, um, you have not even started your, your, your uh, maternity, sorry, your, um, um, the things they go to before they, they give birth, um, right, you can indeed enter our hospital, antenatal, exactly, you can indeed enter our hospital and get treatment. You know, there's several almost, you know, popping out babies that we have and we have to rescue them. These are some of the things that are, you don't even need my approval. These are standing orders which must be specific to, you know, and so that's why I said that I know the numbers are indeed coming down. And I'll check to be sure that we can put out all of those data out there. But in terms of other specifics, what are we doing? So very intentional. If you also look at the, the, the setup of my cabinet, right, um, and all of the various big thicket transactions that I'm doing, I intentionally look for a woman. The woman that is running all of our bridges, building all of our roads, which is infrastructure, which is where we have, we believe we have done fairly well, right? Um, uh, is headed by a woman. Um, all of the successes in real that we talked about with Lamata is headed by a woman. Um, all of the issues around our public works that we're doing, the main director there is a woman, right? If I talk of public schools that are renovating, the main director there is a woman. So these are some intentional, right, um, um, skills that we look out for that we also help to grow. In other areas where we believe is not within the public service, right, if you talk on our interventions in the tourism industry, so we had four, um, uh, well, I would say world-class in, in our own remit, you know, um, um, organizations that are doing very, very well in that space. So we worked with Ebony Life, we worked with um, Dell York, we worked with Gidi, and we worked with, um, which is late now, um, um, Peace. Peace, Peace, I am Osigwe, right. And for all the four of them, right, um, we got very huge numbers from Ebony Life, you know, where our direct interventions, we're giving them, you know, um, like sort of like a bursary, paying their tuition, you know, to develop skills in that eco space. And Peace, Peace did about 1,800, 65% of them were women. That was what we told her to target. Similarly with Ebony Life, you know, 60 to 65% are women. You know, those were the things that we told them. And we paid tens of millions of dollars to support that. Finally, on our graduate internship program, which is headed by um, a woman minister, um, commissioner um, in, in um, poverty elevation and, um, and wealth creation, right? Um, we've trained um, about 7,500, you know, young graduates. And what do I mean? These are graduates that they finished, right? They don't have a job. And so we intentionally bring them on a six months internship program in government and also out of government. We look for private companies that will take them. We will pay their salary for those six months, right, while they go through those training, you know, which is one of the things they usually work, will look out for. And in that whole program, we ensure that minimum 50% has to be women, right? At the end of the day, the success have shown us that 65 to 70% of them get recruited, you know, back into those companies, you know, for the six months that they found them you know, very competent, you know. The last one, which I also talk about, which has, is affecting people directly, is a recent launch of the Latif Jaconde Leadership Academy that we just launched, right? And um, so we'll have a first set of um, 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 30 um, um, scholars that are going to the, the leadership training. And we're clear to say that we must have at least 45 to 50% women there. So out of the 30 of them, 14 are women, 16 are men. So you can see that Intentionally, we have to balance those numbers and ensure that in places of development, leadership, and also ensuring that they have a space, we are very, very strategic you know, in all of the things that we're doing. All right, uh, Your Excellency, good to have you on International Women's Day, and thanks yeah. for speaking to all those issues. But let's go to real politics now. Yeah. This conundrum of who is a Lagosian and the ethnic bigotry and bias going on, that a lot of people have touted people that are peddling in the state. I mean, what are you going to say? Are you going to condemn this? that some people are not from Lagos. Also, are you going to condemn the thuggery that is going on in Lagos? People were beating for going to vote last week. 
all sorts of thuggery happened. And this thuggery also happened somewhere in Surulere that led you not going to the debate, which a lot of people have been asking, that as the chief security officer, why didn't you come to the debate? Are you going to condemn this thuggery? And what are you going to say for those that are causing chaos in this center of excellence? You said it, it's center of excellence. And that's a word in which I want to, you know, um, so if indeed we're excellent, there's some things that we need to be able to be globally competitive with, you know, um, the resilience, our ability to make sure Lagos continue to, you know, create opportunity for everyone. FD has numbers in the country, shows that Lagos continue to wrap up, right? So, but in terms of specifics, you know, um, to the extent that we do all of these identified trainings and bringing skills out, we also don't have rules over who comes into Lagos at what point. We don't have a border post at Ojota or anywhere coming into Lagos. So we usually have a challenge to know where are all of these people coming from. Because for us, a Lagos that is a center of excellence must continue to speak to that excellence in, in every sense of it. You know, it's a place where people come in, do business, do well, and they can create wealth for themselves and their family and the ecosystem, the, the community in which they live. That is our primary you know, driver, right? Any other thing that comes up will be a distraction for us, right, which we will need to deal. So to answer your question very well, it's condemnable, and I totally condemn it. It's not acceptable. It's not something that any you know, forward-looking government will want to... So you, you condemn know, the ethnic absolute. bigotry. Oh, absolutely. So, and those so, that are saying some people are Igbos, they're not from Lagos, you condemn all of so that. So first thing first is that. The first thing is we're human beings. That's the first thing, right? And the next, very next level is that we're Nigerians which is a, a put together that is not you and I that created it. The moment we can put that into inclusion, then the next question we'll ask ourselves is, okay, so Ion needs to go to an hospital. You know, at the point of she's going to deliver, would she say that she needs a Yoruba doctor or she needs an Igbo doctor for her, for her baby to be catch? Or you are going to a bakery and you want to ask that you want a Yoruba bread that is manufactured as against, you know, an Igbo bread. Or Ruben here will go to a butcher and says, it's only the meat that has been caught by an Aosa man and a Yoruba man that I'm going to eat. For as long as those don't divide us, for as long as those are not the parentheses in which we judge ourselves, you know, these other lines that politics has brought, you know, it's just supposed to be a little dot and move away very, very quickly. You know, we should not even ventilate it. We should not give it anything to hold a space in us. You know, because what drives us is that I want to enter an Uber. I'm not asking you where are you from. I want to go into a bakery. I'm not asking who baked this bread. Those are the things, in my view, that define the excellence that we have in Lagos. And that's what we should promote, right? We could have a flash, you know, to say that, ah, this person is not from my town. Which town? Right? Where Nigerians were human beings. Nobody has, you know, that dominant thing about it. So the, the real, you know, answer to that is it's, it's not something that I will, you know, push for. It's not something that, you know, I'm, I, 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 I would um, continue to ventilate. But I understand and also appreciate that in local communities, there are cultural issues, you know, there are cultural issues that people want to preserve based on the number of years they've been in a place or something. So those also could be, you know, respect because you are, you know, in a place where some people say we've been here for three, four, five hundred years. These are the ways in which we do things. You know, but the world is actually indeed becoming a single dot, okay. a global market. Okay. You know? okay. So, I also want to talk about the case of Togri. Togri was so rife that you, you claimed they prevented you from going to the debates, that you don't Togri want to stand and gun, and and gun violence yes, and yes, on yes. all of that. Yes. So, but what would you like to say about the Togri that happened during the elections? Are you it's going to condemn it? It's totally and a lot of people are saying the, the state should be able to clamp down on the talks. What are you going to do as regards that? So, and why didn't you attend the debate? People are asking. So there are too many things you have put it together. Right? Sorry. I, I mean, I only, I only get to see you <laughs> once. No, in well, it's, it's an oh, no. I like that. <laughs> but it's so it's condemnable. No society, no leader worth his worth will indeed allow, you know, a state, you know, to be run, you know, by people that, you know, we cannot even identify. You're right. So it's that's condemnable, you know, and, and I think the military, sorry, the, the, the um, entire security operatives should be able to deal with that. You know, I mean, I was in my house, like I'm sure with all of you. And so it's not something we should entertain in our society. To ask the question around why did I, um, it would have been nice if I rise up, I've, I've invited me, I probably would have turned up, you know, but um, and, I, and I did that, and I put out a statement, and I told the organizers that this, if you want to be in a leadership position to run the sixth largest economy, right, in Africa, there's some, there are some rules that you should not be found. We saw brazenly on social media, right, branded vehicles with guns, you know, with cutlasses in a neighborhood in broad daylight, right, 
few days to that. It's totally unacceptable, right? And because of that, and I said, I will not stand on the same platform. I will not, well, that's in a way. I will not stand on the same with such, I mean, an, 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 and well, I mean, it's, it's a Somebody government signed it up. In the studio here. Yes, sir. Somebody sent a message, said, labor tsunami has forced some of you out <laughs> to start <laughs> talking to the media. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess the person was referring to the fact that the presidential candidate of your party, now yeah. president elect, yeah. lost to labor yeah. in Lagos State. Yeah. Now, the question is, what is the lesson that you have uh, learned from that, that you have taken away from that, particularly with regard to how young people of Lagos State voted on February 25th? So, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting discussion, right? And we need to look at it globally because the candidate who is a presidential um, president elect now, right, will have looked at the map of Nigeria, clearly. Lagos is one of his base. But for, for him to have won that election, he probably would have looked at Lagos and looked at the big case, which is Kano, Kaduna, and Katsina, right? Interestingly, all of those first states did not go favorable for him. So it, 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 is, it is beyond even Lagos. It is to look at, you know, the election you know, and how it has turned out. And that's what even um, um, historians and political discussants need to also further, you know, dimension. But for us, in one week, we've been able to identify and look, you know, critically as into what went wrong, right? And some of them were not just chipping it, yeah, right? The Muslim Muslim ticket, you know, played a role because we knew that there were a lot of, this Lagos also center of, I mean, um, um, a lot of Christian, you know, population and rest, and we had the information. So it's there, right? The other reasons are, some people say that, from their own ethnic nationality, this is the first time they're having a son on the ballot. So, you know, it's good, it's not good, now my picking, you know, I'm going to go ahead and deal with it. So we cannot fault anybody. It's, that's the beauty of democracy. The third reason is that we ourselves have our own internal wrangling and we have our own internal issues that we're not able to resolve or we haven't resolved fully, you know, before we went, you know, into the election. So, in my view, these are some of the things that has indeed affected. And you also, you know, um, you've also mentioned, I mean, the issue about the youth, right? Um, it's, it's also not a, a something that we should play down on. But for me, the, the, real, the real conversation is if we claim that Lagos has 6.7 million or thereabout voters that have collected PVC, you know, so why do we have only less than 20% voter turnout? So those are the main things that we need to also critique. You know, and find out what is what do we need to do additionally for people to want to come out you know, and exercise their civil you know, duty. It's, it's a national call, right? It's not an APC or a Labour or a PDP thing. It's a national you know, assignment that we believe our citizens must be able to respond. Why? Less than 20%. You know how well you were talking about PVC collection, extensions, you know, you draw the line. To, and so at the end of the day, why did they show up? So maybe these are some of the things. So it's not a true reflective, given less than 20%, it's not a true reflective of a total Lagosian. And that's why I'm out to ensure that a 3 million, a 2.5 million becomes a decent percentage of Lagosians that must you know, come out to vote. The people came out. The problem is that they were disenfranchised by the incompetence of INEC. Because we were all part of yeah. that election. Okay. We all witnessed it. But Okay. Well, I mean, what, what know, plans they, do you have for the young people of Lagos State? A lot. Because they, they are very critical of you. Oh, well, yes. And they're my, they're my children. They're my, they're my bosses in some space because I identify with all of them. I identify with all of them at various, various levels, right? Um, you know, it, it's a large number, right? And there's no way you can do it. You can satisfy every single person. I'm not the greatest person that engage, you know, social on social. I'm not the greatest because there's a lot of roll off sleeves that you need to get to to work. Um, but in, in terms of specifics, you know, everything that we're doing is very, you know, intentional to look at how do we get people out of the poverty market? How do we get people out of the unemployment market? Right. So if I do a road construction, right, the road construction is not for me. It's about, you know, the number of youth that are, you know, um, that are working as supervisors, as laborers, as engineers on that site. So it has a trickle effect. That's how the, the, the pyramids actually work, right? For every infrastructure intervention, it is meant to be money for some youth who is energetic, who can also provide, you know, for his family. And other areas which they want is technology, for example. We are the only state in the country, right, that has provided that enabling environment. In less than two years, we've seen international, you know, um, labels of international communities, international organizations, 
coming into Lagos to make foreign direct investment, runs into billions. In fact, Lagos consistently has become the tech startups in Africa. And it's because of the regulatory environment. It's because of the economic, you know, that were, that were provided for them. What do I mean? We've just done 3,000 kilometers, right, on fiber duct connectivity. That will reduce, you know, the cost of internet penetration, reduce the cost, you know, for them to have data. There's so many of them that are living in Lagos that are working for companies in, in US and Canada. It's because of the speed at which their, 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 their computers can work. That's what has given them that. Day. Look at entertainment. They have so much, you know, that is going on on their music. It's also because of internet penetration. So the telcos know that we've provided the infrastructure back, backbone. We've provided that enabling environment. So we, you might not see it as a direct, you know, correlation from me, but as a direct correlation from my decision, my investment, and my policy have allowed for them to be here. All right, thank you. So thank very you. quickly, when we talk about young people, when we look at the legacy of the first four years of the Governor Sawonlu administration, yeah. you talk about infrastructure, yeah. you're big on that. You talk about what you've done in maternal mortality. Yeah. But one thing that the young people talk about is your response to the NSAS protest. Yeah. Lagos State was the epicenter. I'm sure you didn't imagine that you'd come for an interview and not speak about that. No, okay. Because that's one of the grievances of the young people and why they say they're not going to vote for you on Saturday. So... In terms of the role that you played, are there lessons from how you handled or responded to the young people's agitations for so, NSAS in 2020? Hold on a second, sir, please. Okay. And also, in responding to that, what would you have done better? Because the young people are listening. It's big on their hearts. And so they want you to speak to them as their chief executive officer, how you would have handled their agitations perhaps better because they felt that they were, you, you put them in a very precarious situation and that there's some error that you denied that actually happened. And the second part of that question is on security. A few minutes ago, you talked about the fact that with the security, you, ha you, you didn't attend debates for that. However, many, many Lagosians can't say that. They are on the streets of Lagos and they're afraid. And unlike you, sir, they don't have the security protection that your office offers. So do you think security has fared better in the four years of you being governor? And how best would you, or how better would you handle security in you Lagos? Know, I, I would have um, wanted a longer time to explain because um, you've touched on very critical things. Um, my role played, lessons learned, you know, absolutely. There's no leader that will do what is well that will not do, you know, a forensic analysis of what and what happened. But if you want to, for once, just drop it, right, and do a role play, put yourself in my situation and, you know, just watch and not listen to what I think I want to hear, but, but, but hear what truly, truly actually happened and not just social media, you know. In fact, the answers had started almost three weeks before that incident of October 20, almost three weeks. So it had built up, you know, in itself in various locations. People have come to some certain locations as, you know, as a place where they can always aggregate on a daily basis. I was the first governor that went there to meet with them nationwide. It, it didn't start in Lagos, but when it got to, I was the first, right? Waters and all sorts. That's the price of, of, of leadership. I was one that took the four to four or the five for five to Mr. President, with pictures, with everything. I was the first that set up, right, a, a fund to, for people that were, either had been molested by police, to come forward and get restitution, right? I was the first, I was the first that set up, you know, a tribunal and a panel. In all of these things, I was the first, first, first. Move forward, the incident on that night happened. I was in my house with some cabinet members when it happened, so we didn't have an idea at all. In terms of the question they ask, you know, who ordered the shooting and also, who ordered for a CPS not to listen to me when I went to Magodo the other day? So you can see who ordered that. We were, we were, we were at election last Saturday. There were more military out there, you know, than police. Who ordered? It's not in my remit. It's not in my space. But if we just drop it for one second and just do a role play, right, and ask what were my own actions before, during, and after, I went out that night. I went to all the hospitals, you know, that we could have patients. I went out at 12 midnight, right, that night, and I saw things for myself, and I reported what I saw. Eight o'clock the following morning. At 10, 11 o'clock, things could have changed, but I reported what I saw, right, and I would not deny what I didn't see to what people want me to say. And I want to speak to the youth and say that, indeed, I am a father. I'm a leader. 
I'm a man that truly understands the pain that parents bear, the challenge that you have as a young person. I have been a, a starter myself. At 25, I owned a small company that crashed at 26. I've, got, I've lost money before. I understand what it is for a young person to be out there sweating yourself out and not being able to meet up what it is. So I will, I will be the least person that will disenfranchise or that will mess them up. So the lessons and the learning of, of answers is not lost on me. Will we do a few things differently? Yes, we will, right? But I just need to say that we need to leave this idea around there was a big bust that happened. No. And one other thing, right? All of the people, and I'm saying this for the first time on, 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 on national TV, all of the people that claim that they were either injured or they were affected in one form or the other, I, Baba Jilu Shalasu have reached out to them and I've supported them. I've given them jobs, I've given them empowerment, I've given them things for them to start right. And that's why you don't see anybody during this campaign trail coming out to say okay. that I was an NSAS event, um, something, I, I lost something. And because in, I have taken it up and I feel that is not a thing for the papers. That is something for me as a father, as a leader, to do for them and clear this air around it. Don't forget, it was 2022 that we had COVID. I lost citizens. After that event of, of, of 2020, October, in December, we lost the highest number of fatality on COVID based on all of the things that happened. We lost seven, eight professors in one week. And so, so, so let's be big and see the, the bigger picture, right? And, and people have asked me, you know, what are the things, you know, that always bleeds your heart when you wake up? Is the fact that my young kids, my, my unicorns, my, my self-start young people, do not do a role play for one second. Don't put things in your head that this is the only way and that's what has happened. No, just for one second, drop it and do a reflective mode and play it back. It wasn't a flash incident. It was an incident that has, that has piled up for three weeks. For three weeks. And for whatever reason, I didn't have control. I don't control the police. I don't control the media. We've still on the conversation. Just to do state police, we've been on it for three, four years. We've been on it. And to answer your second question on security, that has been. I was, and, 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 and almighty Dr. Bear, um, 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 Ruben is here. We were both on the first board of the Lagos State Security Trust Fund. I was one of the people that set it up. And that has been a model that is helping us to fully equip you know, the Lagos State Police Command, including buying diesel, buying fuel, buying everything for them. At some point, I had to buy ammunition for them just to keep them safe. Vehicles, that, those runs into hundreds. That's, that's a minimum I can do. Encourage them, you know, make, but for them to do the policing, that's their role, right? And for as long as it's still a national, you know, health agency with just a small dotted line with me, well, there's not a lot that I can do. At this point, well, so much to talk about. Thank but you. we'd like to thank you. Uh, for joining us uh, on the morning show, Governor Babajide Sonwulu of Lagos.